just start. Actually, my name is Petr Mazanet. I'm from the Mountains Company. Um, as we are developing software, approximately half of the company is developing for connected TVs and for set boxes. So that's actually a reason why I will cover this topic today. Originally, this was split into two parts. One part was about the smart TV and the second part was about the Google TV and the second part was covered by my colleague who is sitting outside. But actually the Google TV, especially in last, in last month, I don't know if you are looking for that, it looks like this platform is going to extinct and um, Google itself expressed uh, the objectives against that and said that this platform is a commercial failure. It is a fact because the worldwide there is about one million active users for the Google TV. We also in our company drop the support for the platform and the new devices which for example Sony releases last month, even they are originally based on the Android operating system plus the Google TV extension, they are no longer called even the Google TV. Also the Chromecast might be seen as another nail to the coffin. So I'm not sure if this is really the end for the platform itself because Google will for sure continue the fight to be in your living room because it is really something they must occupy as well as the Apple and they will not give up. But for current time being the Google platform itself, the Google TV platform itself, I would consider as dead, but not for forever. They will resurrect it in some time. I will later on, I have still some slides here um, to show you why we think this happens um, and maybe uh, explain a little bit uh, what, what, what happened uh, on this platform. Actually, if you are a JavaScript developer, it qualifies you quite well to be a smart TV developer. I'm not sure if any of you have this experience to develop on television. Um, definitely it's worth a try. Maybe in your company you are thinking about it and you have JavaScript developers, or you are. Um, not only because this is a platform which uh, became more and more popular, of course you can't compare it to the popularity of uh, mobile phones and what is happening here, but it's, it's quite popular and we see, at least in a commercial sphere, that more and more customers are coming to us and asking us to develop applications for smart TV. Actually, being a smart TV developer, it gives you an opportunity to support much more platforms. It's not only television, it's a lot of set of boxes, it's game consoles, PS or Xbox, both can be supported with the JavaScript. Plus, of course, you have the whole world of the desktop development. So, knowing this language well, um, you can be more flexible, even if you, for example, lose your job or you're looking for something, something else. Um, so let's just define a little bit what is a smart TV. Uh, definitely the, there is a comparison between a mobile phones and smart TV in terms of what happened because the mobile phone originally was quite a stupid device, allowing you, not a stupid, but let's say simple device, allowing you to make call, maybe send SMS. And then as the time passed, there became the connectivity and operating system, which was enough open to all the third party developers to come with application. Originally it was Symbian and it was Android, Apple comes with operating system and that brings the mobile phones, the smart mobile phones to masses and this is what we are looking for, the developers. Uh, same thing is happening with the televisions actually. From that point of view it's pretty similar. Uh, all the smart TVs have of course internet connectivity and allows us to develop applications. Um, here is very really important what kind of operating system they run because the development is based on JavaScript and at least with the latest editions, it's all based on the WebKit. Uh, it's quite, uh, everybody who, who, who is doing the web development should be quite familiar with the smart TV development, let's say in a few weeks. But there are some specifics which I will try to explain you maybe give you a word of warning that not everything is that simple in, in this world. Actually, originally, every TV vendor, which is the world, uh, there is quite traditional because those are companies who are developing televisions for ages, and uh, even older, most of them, than the Google or Apple is. 
um, but not all of them. Actually, the thing is that they originally came with their own maybe with their own languages, their own frameworks, but soon they found that it's not that convenient that if you develop something, for example, for Panasonic, then you must do it from scratch for the other platform. So there is kind of common base which you can use if you are doing it in a clever way and cover more television. But this is regarding the development I will cover later. There are another aspect which are not related to us, to developers, which still make the television smart. It's a set of built-in functionalities, I would say. Definitely is a content sharing, so in your local home network, you can show images, play videos. Uh, many televisions are all kind of screen mirroring, so what you see on your television, you can see on your mobile phone, allowing you uh, some uh, extra extra view of the content maybe in the area, in, in our room for example, connected by the Wi-Fi, of course electronic programming guide, which downloading rich information over your internet connectivity it is almost a must. There are some new features like face recognition, some social network uh, integration, which is also appearing and some other features which I don't think are that important, but still if you switch it for the first time and you are the ordinary user. You, you might like them. Yeah. There are listed the main TV vendors of the television. It's definitely Samsung and LG. Um, those are, I would say, biggest manufacturers when it comes to the smart TV shipments, at, at least in Europe. Uh, Philips, Sony, Panasonic are also quite big. Toshiba now comes with their own solution after unsuccessful rollout of the previous one, now it's called Google, uh, Cloud TV, sorry. Plus the Opera TV is an engine which is embedded in several uh, televisions which might not be used, for example, in middle European market, but for example, Vestel is a Turkish manufacturer which is using quite heavily, and a lot of set box manufacturers also rely on the Opera TV uh, software. So when it comes to the comparison, uh, a lot of people is kind of expecting that if the smart TV starts now, it will be the same move as a mobile phone. Actually, this is not that entirely true because you can see that the Apple TV and Google TV fails in that area, obviously because their shipments are low um, and they are not earning any money from that sector. Apple TV is making maybe a little bit better than the Google TV, even it's close to developers, but still. Uh, we, as a provider of solutions, we rather than see fighting be between both two worlds, we sell convergence here, so both devices can work together. I mean, kind of classical example is that you are watching or browsing the content on mobile phone while you are seeing the, uh, actually the movie on your, on your TV, you are doing this in parallel, you can vote uh, or put a comment on your mobile phone currently, currently watch TV, still they are connected either locally or by some server. Um, you can, within the same application, actually see some content on the television, different content on your mobile phone, still it can be the same service uh, for, for single subscription. So there is a lot of things and those devices are really working together and many actually service providers we are working with, which are providing the videos, uh, finding a convergence between two platforms. The other example for this might be that on television it's very hard to type a text, especially login and username is the first, let's say, kind of firewall when the new user is coming to this platform and he needs to type it. So it's much easier, for example, to show some server-generated pin, then you log in on your mobile phone, type the pin here, and the devices are there at the background, things in the server. So there is a convergence, and there is a big difference between those devices, that the phone is something which is just personal to you most of the time, but the television is a shared device. So while you like to play with your mobile phone and you are using uh, your free time to find what is new here, most probably this is nothing you, are, you will do with your television and you will not store any private information here. It's just a shared device and as, as this actually you must consider it when it comes to the services and also when it comes how often this device uh, is renewed because once the phone you may be would like to present and buy every two years a new one. Mm, maybe the period may be a little bit shorter or, 
for a little bit longer television might stay in your living room for seven years untouched and then when it is really broke you buy a new one so you see maybe you skip the whole decade of the of the smart tv and you jump into totally new world just because you are not buying this television that often some numbers which might be interesting for you actually because our offices are based in czech republic this is from czech republic you can see that uh, last year quarter of uh, czech citizens bought a new television it means quarter of family because tv is family family device and 82 percent of them were smart it is not accidental it's because they dominate the market so even you would like to buy something which is non-smart in, in a normal store you might not found a television or it might not uh, be not fits your, your other requirement actually worldwide the shipments are much lower it's because uh, they need a quite good connection to be able to stream the video content especially which is the main purpose and in Africa South America even big part of the Asia you simply don't have this internet connectivity so the vendors are not shipping those televisions here uh, it what the statistics are telling us that the smart TV this is actually they, they are booming in 40 countries around the world and it's mainly Europe and North America uh, maybe some countries in the MENA region like uh, United Arab Emirates maybe Saudi Arabia this is where the smart TVs are shipped but definitely in India for example even it's a big market in China uh, the, the smart TV shipment is much lower because they are missing every connectivity the televisions might be too expensive to fail anyway if you consider a number in 2012 there were 66 million televisions sold actually it gives you the access to a much bigger audience because the television is shared so you might multiply by three or four plus the one of the other differences is that in front of the television you spend let's say continuous time which might be three hours comparing to your mobile device which maybe you are using just for one or two minutes just to check something and then you continue with your with, the, with something else so this ought to be considered when you are developing here an application and just not don't be uh, how to say it. don't quit your know, thinking about the smart TVs only because those numbers might be low actually in 2015 some prediction says it will increase that 66 worldwide shipments will be smart there are some expectations or that 5% of all connected devices in 2017 uh, will be connected TV which is actually three times more for example than the game consoles so the market is here and even it's not that big as the mobile phones or tablets which actually be about 60% compared to 5% of the smart TV I have here some numbers for the Austrian market when you decide maybe develop for some brands those you most probably should target and especially Samsung uh, this comes from one of our customers which is based in Austria so I really don't know if they are true but at least they are following them so first they target Samsung and then they are thinking about the other platform but as I said at the beginning if you develop the application in a clever way actually going from Samsung to Philips and uh, putting application here to the market is not a big pain as uh, many people is thinking so let's look a little bit what hardware is behind those televisions because if you have one and if you try some application maybe you are quite disappointed uh, about the low performance especially when you compare it to your iPhone 5 or some Galaxy S4 Android where actually everything is running fast now you start the application and you are waiting like five years ago on your desktop so that's the reality actually this is also what makes a big difference between being a desktop web developer and being a TV developer. You must think about every library, you must optimize the code heavily, you must test on all models because even if it's four years old model, you still have it. Many actually customers have those models in their home and they are expecting the application to run on them because they will have this television for another four years. Um, it's interesting that they are so slow. We actually do not know why exactly it's bad because it's not that those uh, CPUs or boards are that bad. Actually, we think that uh, the, and it's hard to find an answer for that. 
because many of them are dual cores, and actually most of them, which were released this year, are at least dual core. Um, but simply we think that the TV manufacturers do not have this experience, and then when they are building some frameworks, yeah, they are not optimizing that they would like to be quickly on market, they would like to cut the cost wherever possible. So the result is something which is actually not well documented many times, they have a lot of bugs and firmware, and then a simple functionality which runs on one television is quite fast, might be very, very slow on the RTV and you have to rewrite it. All the televisions are running Linux, yeah, and all actually the executive environment are now based on the WebKit, which is much better than it was even two years ago when they were trying to come with some own web engine. Actually, the television, and you can find it on the Google by, by just typing for what security trees it might be in your house. The problem is that they are not caring about it that much, and it's until now. Everything around with the root privileges on those Linuxes, you have almost no security, the television is always on. So once you get access to it, you can start to think even a microphone, camera, it can, in theory of course, it can start spying in your living room, in your bedroom. So this is a problem which the vendors should address in the next period. And so far they were not touching that that much. But as I said, Googling it, you find some studies, um, some actually articles, how to hack it, how you can easily actually use it on the camera, or how you can install a machine software on a Linux, uh, which is running on the television. So this is one of the problems besides the performance, which we think the next few models will at least a little bit address. So when it comes to the development itself, as I said, JavaScript, Kaska style sheet, HTML5, at least partly supported, it's better and better. But still, we have to think that you must support 2011 models often. So, forgot about something which is nice and or good on the new model, you simply must error, not use it at all, or have some cases for the older devices. The other problem is that uh, Comparing to the web, web, uh, web, custom to web development, when you open any any project, you will find that there is really tons of JavaScript, which actually it's quite hard to debug on the television. You have no possibility to make any debugging here, and you have to rely only on logs, log files, which you can either see on screen or you can get out of the console. The emulators which you are using, which are trying to actually help a little bit, are either slow or they are crashing, they are not that usable and many functions uh, on a television are simply not available on emulators. So when it comes to development, you really must be patient and very precise. You have to often upload the application to the television and check if everything is still correct. Because if you do it weekly and then on Friday you found some bug, then it's kind of pain to go back and try to find what maybe you did wrongly on Wednesday while it works on the emulator or in the Chrome environment uh, all the time. Specific API, every TV manufacturer has some specific API. How to handle the remote controller? Uh, there are different kinds of remote controllers. How to handle the local storage, how, okay, how to access it, and what is the lifetime of, of things saved in the local storage. Then of course the biggest pain, the biggest uh, topic to be discussed in the technical support is the video playback, support of codecs, streams, uh, which versions, which uh, parameters, which uh, DRM protection and what, what uh, actually versions of the DRM protection and what functionality are really, really, really supported. Every TV vendor handles it a little bit differently and this can take weeks until those things are clear because for example, if someone already has application like Netflix and would like to add a smart TV into their portfolio, you must kind of adopt to the stream they already have and the content they have encoded. You can't expect that they will re-encode 5,000 movies only before smart TV. So it can be sometimes hard. Of course, uh, they have many of the manufacturers have uh, their own way of how to be tele how the television can be discovered and how you can communicate with them using the mobile phones. And almost every TV vendor has on Google Play or App Store at least one application which allows you using your mobile phone instead of the remote control and control the television or Wi-Fi with different qualities. 
And then we have some specific APIs, for example, Samsung has some primitive gesture recognition and voice control. Some other televisions might have something different. So, so this is a specific API which are available only for one vendor and you can use it on the other team. Uh, I, I spoke about the JavaScript, but some televisions can be programmed in Flash, which we are considering as a technology which is almost dead on this platform. On some television, you can do pure native applications using the really Linux, but it's, it's first very, very hard, then so you even port it to some other models from the same manufacturer, and you must really have a very close relationship uh, to the TV vendor to do that. Uh, recently, you can execute the sandbox C++ for some mathematical operations for games or for some analysis. Uh, or within the JavaScript, it's now available only for Samsung televisions, but I already read that some, that maybe LG is thinking about using the same to optimize some, let's say, uh, operations which might be, might, might take some time, especially when it comes to the, to the, to the games. So, a typical development, developer in our company has on his table smart, Samsung Smart TV, this is no, it's not chosen accidentally just because those televisions are best for, for the development. Smart TV SDKs is kind of must at least one uh, to check the documentation and the emulator for the Samsung Smart TV. Currently, we have our own SDK which we develop ourselves, and this only makes our life easier because we have some layer which hides the differences between all the televisions. So, saying that. If you really do not need any specific functionality, you can use our SDK and don't care about how to call the video player on Samsung uh, or on some other brand. Google Chrome is the biggest helper here. All of our developers are using that. So actually, in, in the 90% of the, of the time, you are using the Google Chrome. Uh, it can, it's running fast compared to any tool that the TV vendors are providing. Uh, it has kind of good debugging features, so I would say definitely use that. Even some functionalities are already within the IDE, which is, for example, distributed from Samsung or LG. Don't use it, just use the, use the Google Chrome browser. It's much, much better, and then use just some editor to, uh, for your choice, of course, to type the text. Uh, there are some specifics, and currently you can, uh, for example, take a web page, just modify it and put it on television because this is a totally different world. I mean, just considering um, the remote controller, how, how let's say, uh, the stupid or simple device it is comparing to the mouse, to the keyboard, to the touch screen. Also, nothing on the television typically scrolls. Everything should fit on one screen, should be a big object. Uh, the UI must be as simple as possible because TV users might even not be a computer user. They do not know anything about the, uh, I don't know, drop-down menu or something like that. It must be very, very simple to allow them to use the application fast and in a fast and quick manner because they would like to sit in the chair and just start it and they would like to quickly find a favorite movie. They do not want to uh, go through some sub-menus and maybe filter something. This is not for them. They would like to quickly see the movie and eat a dinner. Uh, all saying that you must care about all the sizes, all the colors which must be see some contrast when you are doing that. Also there are some suggestions how, how far it has to be from the television which the normal user is not following so you must consider that, that if you put subtitles over the, over the movie it must be enough big and so, so the normal person in his uh, age of 50 can see them. You either really trust that into it. Then you have some specific things like the kinetic control. So some people are using the keypad, some are using the mouse pointers. You must all con you must consider all those different inputs when you are designing the UI. So the UI for television is always designed from scratch. Uh, if we, when we are doing something that's a specific design for tablets, specific for TV, and specific for web, and they have nothing in common, so basically. Three different uh, graphical designers can do that, just sharing the same concepts and colors and form. Um, for us as, a, as a developers, you must be you must have some extra knowledge, especially when you are doing the video streaming function uh, application. And this is uh, how whole this OTT environment, how it's called, those applications works. 
what are the security procedures, what kind of problems you can make with the subtitles, with the uh, video advertisement, with streaming, and this is actually the only way how to learn is the practice, because you can find this written anywhere. So doing application like Netflix, you can learn it, and this is the only possibility. Yeah, it might be that someone tells you, but this must be really, really used in reality. Then we have something which makes our lives easier. Especially the first one, so every television has this resolution. This is fixed for all, across all platforms, so you can make uh, the positions fixed of all elements, no dynamics is necessary here. You can say that this, this element is at position 2020 and it will be always here. Um, performance, as I said, really you can use most of the JavaScript libraries which are optimized for desktop. You must either implement it on your own and experience what is faster. You must check several of them or maybe more models. And then inside, for this we also built some support in our SDK to have a lightweight things like going between scenes, showing the dialogues or, or those things which actually can be quite, quite slow if you load a complete screen or something like this. I a little bit mentioned that the streaming is very important. Um, WebGL is also supported on some televisions. We have here a small demo which is showing actually how, how WebGL might work and perform. Still, this is not for commercial use, but at least we see some effort from Samsung to make it, make it available. SSL certificates, it's a, actually we are, it's not something which is a rocket science, but it's a, just a pain only that the, you have some, you have a defined set of root certificates supported by every TV vendor, and typically they, this includes three or four major issuers from Symantec, while almost all servers are running some set, using some certificates, the cheapest ones, so once you switch at the end of the HTTPS, you find that their certificate is definitely not supported by the television, and you must have very painful communication with their managers why they need to change the certificate on all servers. So, it's just good to know about it and start uh, every every test with where, where the HTTPS is involving at the very beginning of the project because they have no understanding of all the smart TV use and you can stop the development for months simply because of such stupid things. Then, when it comes to some uh, interactivity on the television, some real time responsiveness. For a long time, a long polling was a thing here, so actually you send the request, you are waiting until it timeouts, typically, or not timeouts, but typically the server timeouts within 50 seconds, then you ask again for it. And in that way, actually, you can't be informed. It's not real time, but it's, for example, when you press something on your smartphone, you are using a long polling mechanism, and if it's a carved game, then this mechanism is sufficient. And it's supported on every television, but what it needs actually is a lot of HTTP requests sending every 15 seconds to the background, which can be a uh, reason for some ISP providers to start blocking, for example, the communication because they start thinking that it's kind of security issue and also it consumes some, some bandwidth. So nowadays they are coming the web sockets, which is a quite a good, uh, good, good change. And every television currently implements some um, discovery mechanisms, so we are able to enlist them uh, within within three libraries, which are, for example, available on Android or iOS using QPMP, SSDP, some some really common and standardized ways. Just some comparison: uh, how you navigate is typically in your mobile phone is from the bottom or from the top to bottom. On tablet, in my experience, it is a little bit different. You have uh, typically some error. You have something on the left side, and then you have the main area. <coughs> on television, I will show you on the next slide, it's a little bit different. Definitely, the scrolling is forbidden. It will be quite hard to reach any scroll bars the, with, with the remote controllers, and this is not what, what the typical user would expect. So, uh, you have to avoid it for with every cause, also not, not that much text, and television is definitely on the desktop, so uh, you can just see if you have any smart TV and you just start the Hulu page or HBO Go page, see what they offer through the web or through the desktop, 
and then check, check what they have on a television. You, it's a really different experience. Most of the functionality, which is not directly relevant uh, to, for example, movie playing or radio listening or the weather forecast, it's not here, right? Logging, payment mechanisms, and etc. It's simply a lot of which can be done easily via web, but definitely not on television. This is a uh, typical television and user interface. Set the box interface, Google TV <coughs> interface, simply going from the left to right. You can see that we are following it in one of our applications, which is a very good example. Main menu, then the sub menu if it's necessary, and then go directly to the content. Even here, this is not the best example, as the fonts are too small, especially in the text below, so either it will be rejected by the TV vendor or user will start, from, uh, start actually complaining the customer support that they can't read it. And Yes, they are right. So, but the idea, this is the idea how most of the TV interfaces are working and how the typical common user is expecting that it will work. And then just pressing the back button, which is on, by the way, on every remote control, you are just navigating back to the main menu and you can do the music, actually. About streaming, a little bit. Actually, uh, almost all video streams which, um, uh, which you can use are currently adaptive bitrate, means that they are adapting the, the quality of the video based on the bandwidth and then the processing power of the television. There are, I would say, two standards which I use. One, is, one was pushed along for a long time by the Apple, it is HLS. It's, uh, it will probably never be standard, it's still the ISDA draft, but it's used on every Apple device and it's kind of supported on uh, Android as well, starting from the 4.6, uh, 4.0 version, but the support, support Google provides actually is very poor. Then you have to have some encryption of the content. Then you have all, you have only two choices for that. First is the wide one. This is the name of the encryption scheme. This was a company which was bought by Google, so now the Google provides a wide line protection and the Microsoft as a competitive solution provides what is called Playground DRM. And it's really necessary because if you are selling some video or um, audio content on the television, you must protect it, otherwise I will start some simple dumb and download all your streams, all your movies overnight and put it on some, on some network where everybody can download it. So this is really a must for the providers and actually the movies are provided by the Hollywood studios and you must sign with your own blood that never, and no one will ever get access to your movies and once they will discover that your movies were somehow compromised and it might be you or your source which is uh, where the hackers or, or people are getting the movie then you will be definitely sent to court and they will simply kill you and there are very, very aggressive lawyers and whatever actually contract I have ever seen with MGM or ever and these the other studios or providers are very hard and very strict so it must be very very secure and careful and the company which does not have enough money should never touch the business okay, it's easily complicated from my point of view and so this is something we provide we just use it but the customer is responsible always for, for securing that Icecast is typically used for the, for the radios which is basically the second most popular application of televisions are radios various radio station, I will show you some examples and maybe tell you why they are so popular. Cross-platform, okay, this is very important when you are thinking about the development because what we have seen that, uh, for example, some of our customers or an application and the developers develop for them a Samsung, tele Samsung application based heavily depending on a Samsung API and they start with the LG and then uh, they third company, they did a lot of Philips. So then they have a three solution. They are fine with in 2011, then 2012 years come. They would like to make a compatible and they would like to maintain this and they have to ask each and every company and they of course are charged heavily for, for maintenance, support and it costs a lot of time. So doing anything on the television, do it cross platform, otherwise you can be five times cheaper than the competitors plus of course maintenance on your side is much lower which you will like because you need to focus on new projects and not still handle the projects which are three years old. For this we have there our own SDK which we will publish most probably open source next year. 
or just use your, let's say, how say brain and just wrap all these functions, which is not a rocket science again, wrap all the TV specific functions in some layer and do it just this layer. Never touch the API directly unless you are 100% sure it's really only Samsung. But saying cross platform, it's, that it, there are some other difficulties. First, we do need to have all these televisions. So one television 2011 in your lab, one 2012 Samsung. So the same for LG, same for TV, same for Panasonic. Then some televisions are specific. So you might have five televisions maybe from one manufacturer for the specific year. You also have the blu rays which are also compatible. And at the end, it's like 50 televisions. And I mean, that's enormous effort which is put into testing. But you have to do it. Otherwise, your application will not be certified for television if you would like to support large set of platforms. So, vendors compatibility, even there is some, you still need to test on the target hardware because you never know what can happen. And communicate communication with the Korea, with the Japanese uh, test team is not always, always simple. Then you have region differences. For example, if I'm delivering something to the USA, they have different firmware, and you can be almost sure that at some point, it will work fine in your lab on your televisions, but when it comes to the US model, something will be simply different. So you must purchase the models from US, you must purchase the models from Dubai to test it. Firmware updates, big pay, especially, actually with a television, there is kind of a traditional rule that uh, they are releasing new televisions always at the beginning of the new year. So you can be pretty sure that in January 2014, every manufacturer will show you uh, typically at the sales in the US what will be the new televisions. Then they will roll out on the market, maybe in the March, with very brand new firmware, which will be full of bugs, especially when it comes to the playback of the video. So you have to start testing your application, you found it is not working, you start finding why it might look that it's on an operating system level, you have to contact the technical support, it takes ages uh, until they answer you. Meanwhile, the customer is uh, very angry and uh, why we are still not supporting those new models, why everybody else supports that, it must be your failure. We of course know that this is something in the firmware. Of course, in the LG, it takes them some time until they confirm, yes, it's on our side. It takes maybe a month, you really would like to fix it, yes, you want, okay, we can roll out the firmware update in June, it's too late for us. So, it's very difficult sometimes to find a balance what is really possible to do. It's not that's how we should live with that. But some advantages, you can with the same code, once again, one good, uh, if that's clever, support more, much more platforms, set of boxes, multimedia centers, I mean, boxes already dead, but Western Digital has some quite nice devices, and of course, game consoles. Yeah, if you don't game consoles, you can embed to this code as well, and actually, Sony, as well as the Microsoft, is a little bit more open to support the JavaScript for non-gaming applications, yeah. for games, possible, of course, and this would be quite a better way to do it in JavaScript, but for non-gaming applications, JavaScript is just fine. So, and other channels where you can sell your application, one this was made uh, uh, for Samsung or for the television. Actually, testing, I said, very, very difficult. Uh, firmware checks you can execute in one. Manually, you might set your application, what is the minimum firmware, and then you can check it when the application starts, and you can say, okay, you can't run, we can run your application until you go, you download the firmware to USB stick and you upgrade the television, or maybe there will be over the year upgrade. This is a possible, of course. Uh, unfortunately, the firmware numbering is not somehow defined well by the manufacturer. So maybe the firmware is rolled out in European Union, it will be still, still not rolled out in North Africa, or maybe it is not rolled out in Turkish, and it will never be. Maybe they will a little bit change the number scheme. So, again, problem. Uh, when it comes to debugging, I already said no possibility to debug anything on a television directly. But you can get the logs and display them on screen. I mean, you can imagine how, how nice it looks when you have some user interface, you are debugging, and over the host in us, they're running some semi-transparent logs. I mean, it's a pain, but it's how you have to deal with that. We have a tool to get, which gives us the possibility to get some remote remote logging, which we are actually using quite heavily and we are also pushing this tool towards the TV vendors because if they said the application is crashing, they have to provide us the logs. Otherwise, they just said it crashed. Maybe they provide a video or screenshot, but how it can help 
we it can be anything starting from the problems with the server ending with the version of television they have the film web. so everything once you log it and we are looking really heavily and they have some tool that the get the logs from the television and they send us a log so we can guess mm, let's say all we are almost sure where it is we can try to put more logs here we can try to uh, let's say may more try catch uh, uh, harnesses here and try to solve this problem Wireshark is actually a tool which is extremely useful for us so network traces we are basically analyzing on a daily basis because I mean now the IT sector is not dominated by some technology companies almost every customer has some server which was done by someone those companies those are no IT companies and the server might work in different ways and it's almost you can be almost sure that they are there are it, it doesn't work well sometimes sometimes it's a bad data sometimes it doesn't work maybe they set up new firewall rules and you can't get the content so ruling the wireshark can be being good in, in a network sniffing is extremely big advantage because it allows you figuring the bugs which you will which you will looking in a code for, for for hours you can figure it out in the wireshark quite quickly so this is actually what we are doing almost all the time during the day when it comes to the bug fixing first we are checking everything is okay in the network level. Below is the link to our SDK when you can see what is our approach and maybe you will find it makes your life easier to use. Use it instead of really going and installing Samsung emulator. That's what happens when it comes to testing those actually photographs from my our offices, you can see that today we have televisions everywhere because we need to test on them all the, all the day long. So something like this you, you must have if you will decide to do a smart TV development. Otherwise it can happen that, for example, Philips is reporting that this is not working on some dedicated television. What you can do? You have to start to search your nearest shop to buy, but maybe this is a model which was, uh, which was sold two years ago, how to find it, you have to go to the eBay, maybe you found it on the eBay, yes, they are selling, but it's only in Chile, so until they deliver, you the only PC which you can find on the eBay, it takes months. So these are problems which we have almost all the time. That's why we're keeping all the televisions still up and running. If something is broken, we immediately replace it with, with, with another television. Just be prepared for this, because it for sure happens. Yeah. This is just uh, what they are sending us back from a, <coughs> from a test field. Actually, I don't know, they most probably think everybody is speaking Korean, so this happens all the time that they are sending these messages expecting we will understand it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun when they do it once, when they do it for the 15th time, it starts to be a pain in the ass because <laughs> we still have to warn them that, yeah, yeah really, we don't understand that. It, even with the Google Translator, we have some difficulties. This is what it is. Okay, maybe you have to the moment where the application is ready, it's tested, it's perfect. Now we would like to publish it. So first, the customer must have a written agreement with a TV vendor. So it's not that simple and just register, open an account and upload it here. You can do that, but they will reject it because they would like to see an agreement that the customer has. The agreement can say that uh, based on the negotiation skill of your, of your customer that the TV vendor is not claiming any revenue from his application but they might need something because you are selling a movie to them they might want 5% or maybe they will wait until you reach some customer base and then they will charge you. Who knows? They, it's up to the customer to negotiate it. It can take some weeks. Then QA, quality assurance approval. It's different and every TV vendor has a different procedure. I would say that Samsung is quite friendly. They have quite a good support. It's actually located in Poland, which is good. It's better than if it's in Japan, for example. They are very responsive. They have a lot of competent, competent people here. Still, if it's a little bit complex application than just one screen radio, it easily can, can take six weeks and it can work for another week if you don't have the television, which they are testing and they found the bug. That's why I mentioned you already must be prepared for that. If they can another weeks, if it's a server bug, or maybe days, it's a server bug, and you do not know properly how to use some sniffing tools. It can take another days if they do not send you log files. So all those things are very important. 
and you know, testers are very important, so it's good to keep them and to put them only on television so they understand well what are the typical problems. Of course, every TV vendor is send, is publishing some list, and this list say what are the most common mistakes and what you should be aware of. You have to read it very carefully because it can happen that they start complaining that maybe you didn't fill their documentation properly. And what happens to us that they were for two weeks uh, <coughs> expecting our documentation where there was a checkbox if your application is supporting video or audio. It was a video application, I checked, of course, video. They start complaining that if you support video, if it's all the time you. I said, no, so why didn't you check also the audio? It was a stupid thing, but they blocked a QA for two weeks just because of that. So doing that, uh, spending a few more hours on that saves a little time later. Then how is the application actually installed on the television? So there are two approaches and it depends on the TV vendor. Some, uh, some are supporting a local, a local hosting of the application. So application is downloaded to the television in a pretty similar way as when you download the Android application or iOS application, but not all of them. Some of them are requiring just a link and you need to host the web application on your web server. Uh, this sounds uh, to be easier, especially because later on you can do some changes on your application without not going against through the QA. But the problem is whether to host actually such an application because what can happen if it's a, for example, some live TV application, it can happen that there will be a football game and uh, you have some average use of your application, but this is a football match, which is actually, a lot of people is waiting for that. So then you have 50 times more user uh, at 8, uh, 8, 8 p.m. and <coughs> your web server is of course crashing because the television when start to download the whole application, maybe five megabytes multiplying by 10,000 users. I mean, it's something which crashes your web server at the very, uh, actually quickly. So you must find some places to host them, most probably some CDN. Uh, it comes with another problems like the same origin policy actually because it starts to be a very big problem that the application is not hosted on the same on the same server with, on the same place where the application server is. It has some other other problems like the CDN typically cache a lot of content while Actually, this is something you do not want to have this caching on, on their own because uh, it causes another problem. So this is something we have to consider, but that definitely at the end you will end up with something like Akamai or Level 3, which are actually the two typical CDNs which are used here in, in, in Europe. Okay, there are also some uh, organizations which tries to make the life a little bit easier. Uh, they are not doing that well so far, but this was actually established by LG. It's kind of child, which was born in an LG, LG um, electronics company, and this is a standardization organization which tries to standardize as much as possible. So at the end, you will really develop without any additional code, uh, sorry, any additional SDK the application just once and then deploy it on all televisions. LG is part of that, Philips as well, and actually those are only two companies which will be heavily supported. Then you have some three others. I mean Panasonic, yes, they are part of the executive board, but they so far do not have a television, which is compatible. Vestal is not that popular, but it also joins as the last brand, I think, this, this summer, and we are not developing that much for this platform, so this is not interesting for us. Toshiba actually with the latest 2013 model should be compatible. So you have at least LG, Philips, and Toshiba you can cover with single SDK which is not that bad, but of course it can, when, you, when you are doing that, you are supporting a little bit less feature because they must find something which is in common between those, those three platforms. But they, are, they have quite a good specification. They are not inventing anything new. They are just using existing proven standards for everything, which is very good. They are just starting from the standard. This is mandatory to support. And once you support that, you can make your television branded as a smart TV line and support it. So quite a good thing. They have very nice developer forms, very nice technical support. And one thing I was mentioning that the QA procedure with some TV vendors is a pain. They try to make it common. So you just send the application to them and they a little bit care about the QA. We, we didn't try it yet, 
but that is something which can save to the development company a lot of cost. Some application examples, just tell you that mentioned some which are very typical for the television because as I said, television is a shared device and not every application is really good for the television. And not everything you are using on your mobile phone, like for example, notes, is something you are expecting to type with a remote control on a television. So definitely video applications are the main customers. Then, I mean, think that as just movies or some TV series which are available uh, for some monthly subscription. Live TV, over the IP, is the, let's say, second most popular application, it means that they are buffering all the content on the or the hard drives in the cloud, so once you miss some TV series, you can basically jump, let's say, one week back and play the content you just already played. You can pause the content for 20 minutes and then say play, meanwhile everything was buffered on the server. You can continue uh, watching the tennis match uninterrupted. You can come uh, to your television 10 minutes after the movie starts, you can still jump to the back and start playing it. Something which is not possible with normal DVD and this becomes more and more popular and actually there are services which are caching the whole content which was broadcasted for example for uh, even 10, 10 channels in the last 7 days so there will have tens or hundreds of gigabytes of content which they are maintaining in the cloud and gives you the opportunity to search the EPG back into history and just select something which was played. Radios are quite a popular application because it allows broadcaster to offer you some more content than only the audio. They have a lot of videos, they have cameras in the studios, they have a lot of information about actually the interpret, they have all the graphics. So that's a way uh, how they can present it to you, which again is not as easy with the uh, other, uh, other, other empty way. Uh, magazines, newspapers uh, are the actually now the, I would say, industry sectors which are finding the uh, televisions <coughs> enough capable to and let's say quality images and quality text because they are especially the print, printing media actually are quite picky on what is displayed and how it is displayed but they are finding that the new televisions let's say enough interesting for them simple games, sport news, traffic situations those are the typical applications saying that um, I don't mean that there are no other applications but those are the most typical here you have you have some screenshots which are actually showing uh, some TV user interfaces. You can see that most of them are starting with the menu on the left, something I mentioned before. Then you have a big images uh, immediately showing the content, not that much text, simply allowing a quick navigation. Grid is very popular uh, to be navigated to the remote control or some uh, very, very uh, simple horizon to it. Then those are the EPG applications I was mentioning, allowing you playing something from from a past, something which was already broadcasted, maybe uh, over a DVD, but it's still available in the IP application. On the bottom left corner, you have the radio application uh, showing some radios and then some additional content. What is currently playing? Some information about the singer, uh, some latest news, even from Twitter or from from RSS feed. Uh, on the right side, there is something similar to the previous one. So this was done for the Olympic Games, allowing actually choosing you what type of sports you would like to watch when they are when they are done in parallel. But you, while the TV broadcast, you have access only maybe to one sport at one moment. Here you can see whatever you, if you, for example, prefer judo over hockey, yes, why not? You can uh, watch it while the hockey is broadcasting via DVD. Then some simple games. Actually, televisions are not the game consoles. The remote controls are not the game pads, so power and the performance is also not that good. So those games are should be really simple, either turn-based or something with the big images for children. This is something which uh, is finding their way to the televisions, but I think there is a big, big way uh, before us. As I said, and it's very important that when it comes to the customer who would like to be on more platforms it's good to think about how those platforms can cooperate with each other 
it's uh, sharing the content, allowing different functions on different platforms. It's not that those, those platforms are competing. Yeah? The, uh, they, it's more companion device. Yeah? So something is on television, it might not be so good uh, to have it on a mobile phone, same with game console. So it's not this or that. Uh, when, when they are thinking about uh, implementing application, it's just to think a little bit more about how they can communicate together. Uh, there is a little bit about future, how, how the television might look like. It was uh, presented to us two weeks ago, actually showing uh, seamless integration of the televisions into your world. So it's not only about watching. You can see that they have um, digital images here, they have some news there, they have uh, digital watches there, and it kind of fits the whole environment. So it's all controlled from your iPad. So this can be something where the televisions are going with actually from Cisco company. Um, like the full integration into, into your flat, hiding really the, the, the fact that you have some television which is standing on your cabinet. It's simply, uh, a new different approach. Then <coughs> I said originally that we put away a Google TV part. It's true because it's really dying the technology. Finding uh, one million worldwide active users is something actually which has no meaning for any business. I mean, the good device were quite nice. Yeah, it was a really right time when the Google approached the market, but there were quite expensive. There were only few applications. In the fact, you can access the Google Play if you change it because those applications are not optimized for the Google TV. So they are portraits, they are touch screen only, why this must be landscape application, they must be done for the remote control. And nobody did this optimization. So few applications only very really useful. Google did not care about the ecosystem at all. They didn't create, they didn't update the televisions, they didn't push the other companies to uh, produce more television. Seems like they created a device and stopped caring about it. That's why it was a commercial failure. The user interface also was not that good because it shared a lot of Android uh, functionalities and concepts and those concepts are perfect for the same TV for the mobile phone but they are not that good when it comes to the remote controller and the fast navigation and the remote controller it was a disaster as well as well because we have on the one side the QWERTY keyboard on the other side of the touch touchpad you know we have a keypad so for us as for as the IT people it's nice food but for my mother it was something she was never able to use some examples of devices we are using, as I said, quite nice, powerful. Um, and then there is another comparison why it fails, because actually they try to occupy a little bit from the set of box, uh, set of box, um, uh, set of box industry, but the set of box, the one, one for the set of box is much better, because you have a very good optimized video player. The environment is fixed for a long time. You don't have any updates. You have a very simple user interface. When you purchase, let's say, 20,000 set of boxes, they are very, very cheap, and you can roll out them quickly in massive. Something was not possible at all with the Google TV. And most importantly, it's a very controlled environment. So if you do not want to update the set of boxes for two years, you are not doing that. Uh, users are locked in their environment and they do not call a customer care with every single problem they have. So that's why everybody was choosing the set of boxes over Android sticks or Google TVs. And of course, customer branding is very important that if you buy a Netflix device, it's branded as a Netflix device, and not as a Google device or Sony device or a Logitech device or whatever. Of course, Every Chinese manufacturer nowadays is open to put here on demand features. So if you said, I would like this and that, an extra USB port, it's not a problem at all for them. And in a week, they are able to do that. If you tell it to the Google, actually, they will not support it. Okay, I will end it here most probably because I'm running off time. This was more showing you how the Chromecast is working and telling you that it's very nice digit to use. But I think we are running out of time. Sorry for that. So actually that's all. If you have more questions about smart TV and you 
start maybe during my presentation feeling that it's interesting for you, just come at our stand and then ask us any questions. There are two smart TV developers, so we can answer any questions. Thank you.